Greetings everybody and welcome to this very short tutorial on the value of your Facebook reporting and understanding how we should be using our reporting inside of Facebook so we get the most effective data and can use that data towards uh, to our benefit. So uh, just recently I made a complete blunder and didn't dig into my data whilst running a campaign and because I did that I ended up getting screwed out of a lot of money Boom! completely self-inflicted so don't feel sorry for me whatsoever <laughs> the reason why was because I didn't use the breakdown I didn't use the performance I didn't use the data that I typically should be using to ensure accurate measurement of my results so as you can see here I was I was re I was receiving 33 cents a click and 15 cents a click to these two respective ad sets within a campaign. Very, very good as I as I, as I look at it, and I'm sure, sure as you look at it too, like and especially as I was sending them to uh, a page where they become a lead capture uh, based on a book that they download, which is pretty valuable, very insightful. Thought, great, gonna get a great result. I was only getting 2%, 2% opt-in opt -in rate, which was insane. And I couldn't understand why until I eventually decided to look into my data, which I should have did during the campaign, by the way. Yes. So what is the data and how do you break and have a look into this data? On the right hand side here, we have something called breakdown. And within breakdown, I'm not going to go into all of these, but you've got and you've got a demographic breakdown based on people who are responding to your advertisement. The most common one and the most effective one is usually going to be age and gender. These are the first areas where you'll start chopping and changing your target according to who's responding best. So as you can see here, between the ages of 25 to 34, we have a, a much wider, a much broader, a much higher number of people who are responding to our ads. And you can see the same pattern down here, although between the ages of 34 to 35 to 44 female we can also see a fairly large response to our ad so what I would do here is I would go back into my ad set and either revise my ad set and bring it down to a smaller target so not not targeting so broad with age and keeping it concise with the people that I know are responding or I may separate my ad sets and run two different ad sets at two different age groups it's an it's entirely up to you but remember you're always even the biggest marketing companies are running on some kind of budget therefore you're always going to want to make sure that the information that you're you are optimizing your ads to be receiving the best bang for your buck all right it's the best response for what you're spending if we go over to over back over to breakdown on the right, we also have region. And within region, we can scroll down and see the region being the United States that we targeted, all of the different areas that we're that we're getting or receiving the most response. So these areas where we're only receiving two and two and one and four, uh, we can eliminate and focus all our attention onto the areas that we know we are getting the most interest uh, to our ads. And I'll show you the, the final one for just this short tutorial, and this is just to give you an example of how much I messed up, is something called placement. Placement is, of course, where the ads are being shown based on device. So if it's on desktop, uh, you can show it on the desktop feed, on the right-hand column, on the mobile devices. Um, you can show it in the middle of the feed. But also, you can show it in something called audience network on third party. Now, on third-party mobile and apps, this is where I completely messed up, as you can see. <laughs> 372 clicks from audience network, 494 clicks from audience network. How much I spent here on audience network? How much I spent here on audience network? How much I spent in total? I probably used 75 to 80% on my budget all on the audience network. And... I amassed, I think, over, over the campaign overall was about 17 leads. And I could very realistically argue that pretty much no leads would have came from the audience network whatsoever because those are the annoying ads that people click by accident and rarely do they click for curiosity. So, and that, again, we're marketers, we're accountable to result, but we know also from assumptions and certain experience and perceptions, it's very unlikely that the audience network was actually proving to be effective so I realized wow that was where I messed up 
I did not check my data and I, because I didn't check my data, I got disheartened with the campaign, ran eight, nine different split tests here, couldn't understand it because I thought the ads was pretty good, the copy is pretty good. Not, to re not realizing that, oh wow, the actual conversion was around about 9%, which was not so bad, but hey, it's a good, start, a good place to start to be working with uh, your optimization process and it's where it's a it's a much more reasonable fee to justify with the sales fee that I was selling this particular thing for after they came into the funnel and they received all the emails and the follow-up so you must check your data you must look into your data you've got to use the performance and the breakdown just before we go performance is very simple click on performance click on performance and clicks and what we get is a deeper analysis into how people are engaging with our ads so we have two types of clicks in Facebook you got a click which is any click on your ad a comment a like any kind of click on your ad is clashed clusters interactivity that's clusters your click that is not what we always want to track we want to track link clicks that is usually the call to action button and based on the number of people who click the call to action button we can get a monetary figure as well as a, a click through rate and these are the things we want to pay close attention to to ensure that we're revising our ads correctly and running them to the right audience we then have our impressions and this here is your cost per million or cost per 1000 times this ad has been served up or viewed by profiles within Facebook. So we want to know that we're getting a fairly low low rate on this because we then know that it's costing us a lot less to reach a lot more people. So this can be still quite low when this is busy, but this isn't always necessarily going to be high just because these are high. A person who's clicking on the link is may, may be, uh, uh, people who are clicking on the ad may be a lot more curious than people who are interested in actually clicking on the link. So we must pay close attention to uh, your metrics and information and reporting inside of Facebook to ensure that you run your campaigns correctly and you know the timing for where and how you will revise your campaigns to optimize them for more success. Hope that was beneficial. Until next time.